afraid to leave. Nick. Just four ounces, you know. Nick. 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 She was a lot bigger than this age. <gasps> She was a little bit of a bigger like, baby. Yeah, yeah she, she was. Yeah, she was. Um, she was tiny percent. <laughs> the 90% yeah. Alright, maybe that'll interest you. So she yeah, she's little. tiny. Yeah. Hey, Nick. One more time, buddy. Wait. Okay, Wait. never mind. Why would the Bears spend $33 million on an offensive tackle? Can you just go out and get a quarterback or something? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Nani and Poppy hanging out. Kids all over the place. Dad! Max! <laughs> Dave. Julia. Yeah. New little Madeline. Yeah, he's just like coming around. Ooh, God bless you. God bless you. you. Must be allergic to the camera. You know, like tables and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, not taken. So he can hold it. Jacqueline. Hey Jacqueline, who's on camera? Who is that? How much do I have in this? Jacqueline. Hey Nick, that's a pretty cool shirt you have on. What? You see me. Oh, <laughs> uh, yuck. What is that? I want to see my dummy. 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 I want to big city garbage cans, and the guys would empty the cans in the back of the truck, and I'd stand there at the little chain link fence that was between our garage and next to our property, and they'd usually say something, so I kind of look forward to it. So one day, anyway, we were busy playing in the back car, so busy that I didn't notice that the truck had pulled up behind us until it had already picked up our garbage and was moving on to the next, and I caught sight of it, and I ran over to the fence. I tried to see my buddies and couldn't do it. And I learned, I was maybe three and a half years old. I learned for the first time how to climb a fence. <laughs> so while everyone else was busy, I'm sure it took me forever. But I got up, over, out into the alley. But we were two houses from the corner. So by the time I got into the alley and I turned, there was no truck. And so I walked to the end of the 
alley, the street, and I turned, and no truck, and I took a turn and walked and walked and walked, and turned again and walked and walked and walked. I was lost, completely lost, completely unfamiliar, nothing looked right to me, and I didn't know whether to go back, go forward, I didn't know how to do that. And I can remember being afraid. And as I was walking along, not knowing what else to do, a car pulled up alongside of me, and a man rolled down the window, and he said something to me. And I can remember my mom drilling into our heads, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> and so I ignored him and just continued to walk. But then the car stopped, and the door flew open, and the man got out, and he ran, and he grabbed me. Now I was a little boy. I didn't know what that was about, but I knew it wasn't good. And I can remember crying out for help. And as the man was grabbing me, and I was screaming, and tears were in my eyes, I saw a vision that I'll never forget. It was a vision of a woman, barefoot, blouse hanging out, wearing those 1960 Laura Petri pants, running down the street yelling, put him down, put down my son. And the man put me down and jumped into his car as my mom ran towards me. And when my mom got to me, I can still remember she didn't say a word. She just knelt down and put her arms around me and cried. And I think they were tears of sorrow and what I'd been through. Tears of relief, certainly, but really tears of joy in having me back. And as I later reflected on it, I thought that was an initial instinct that I later came to come to know of what God's life is. You know, there are times in life we wander off, not so innocently, in what we call sin. But I've always known, first of all, that saving, being saved is. But secondly, that there are loving arms always there to embrace me. And I offer that to you. Story from my own life, but I offer it to you because I really believe that that's what the sacrament is about. It's about your beloved daughter, your second beloved daughter, being welcomed into God's family. And for all practical purposes, both the Jacqueline, just his man of life will come to know who God is by how you you are God for right now. And they'll come to know who God is by how you love them, you care for them, maybe you can cry with them, and certainly how you welcome them back, even when they wander us. And through you, they'll come to know the depth of God's love, which is what we share this day. A love poured out for us on the cross with the depth of his very being, just so that we might have life, not here on earth, but forever with him in heaven. So today is about joy and celebration and eternal life, a life of grace. It's important that one of the ways that we get through this life is that we rely upon people that God's brought into our lives. And I know you very carefully have chosen the godparents to help you with Madeline, you certainly have the love and support of your parents, your families, of all those gathered here and many more. But you also have the promise of the church to be here with you, to help bring Madeline up in the faith and to help her to know the love of Christ. And one of the ways we do help is that we pray. So I'd invite you to follow any intercessions if you would please respond for all that hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, by the mystery of your death and resurrection. Almighty and ever-living God, you sent your only Son into the world to cast out the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, to rescue man from the kingdom of darkness, and to bring him into the splendor of your kingdom of light. We pray now for Madeline Ann, Set her free from original sin, make her a temple of your glory, and send your Holy Spirit to dwell with her. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we now ask God to give this child new life and abundance through water and the Holy Spirit. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring her up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life which God gives her this day is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in her heart. In her heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, Renew now the vows of your own baptism. Reject sin. Profess your faith in Christ Jesus. If appropriate, the response is, I do. And so I ask you, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary? was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I ask you, is it your will? that Madeline and Anne be baptized into the faith of the church that we have professed. It is. And I invite the four of you to please come forward. second anointing is with sacred prism and it follows baptism. But you may remember in biblical times when a king was anointed by the prophet to take a cask of oil and pour it over his head and it would come down off his beard. But it was a sign, a sign of God's divine favor and mission. Even that king to exercise his power and go with God's will. All of us in that God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is through our Lord, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin now, and has given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. He has welcomed you into his holy name. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Amen.
sure if this white man, baptismal garment has any family signature. Yes. Yes. This is a wonderful family tradition. It's often passed down. We have a symbol of that too. We also white, as you read in the book of Revelation, is the color of the saints. So Jesus' resurrection is in white. Imagine he's been baptized into his death. Madeline Andrew, if you become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ, see in this white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Amen. In just a few weeks, at the end of Lent, we will celebrate what we call the Easter Triduum Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday. But at the vision, Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday night. The church is completely dark. We light a fire outside and the new Easter candle is marked with the wounds of Christ and is blessed and is brought into the church. And it's a sign of the light of Christ shining out against the power of sin and of death. And that everyone else has their own candle that is lit from it. And the whole church is illumined with the light of Christ and his victory. That is carried on in every baptism. So this Paschal candle is lit at baptism. And again, you will receive a candle from that. This candle is also lit at the, the funeral service of every baptized individual. With the light of Christ lead them to the heaven. Fortunately, throughout the year it gets smaller and smaller, so I can actually reach up. <laughs> Through water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn to everlasting.